If you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, its tools and the opportunities they present, then why not visit BetAngel.com today and download a free trial. Do you need specialist knowledge of a sport in order to trade it? Well, the quick and dirty answer is no, you don't. And actually, sometimes when you're trading, it can be a distinct advantage. Now, if I said to you that the next race at Kempton uh, at 2.30 uh, was a five furlong maiden stakes and the favorite was looking pretty good, a fairly scopy looking individual, uh, had run well on the last time out and goes well over the course and distance, you may think I may know something about racing, but I've just completely made that up. <laughs> and um, the, the funny thing about racing is it's full of terminology uh, that can deflect and make people look quite intelligent. And in fact, you know, there are things that it's nice to know about horse racing, but uh, you know, a lot of the, the stuff that's out there, you just need to get to grips with some of the terminology to understand what you're looking at, but it's not particularly critical when you're trading. And also the interesting thing is that I actually think it can influence you against trading uh, well because one of the advantages I have is when I look at a racing market, I'm looking at the names of some of the horses, I may recognize them, um, but typically I'm not particularly concerned about it. Whether, you know How well it ran last time and so on and so forth isn't a major consideration for me. Um, I observe the observers effectively. So I'm in the market, I'm looking to see if something's being backed or laid, I can detect that. I don't need to know why it's been backed or laid. I can actually see it and I can feel it within the market. And the great thing about that is that gives me, a, you know, I'm a pure trader. Um, I can, you know, see and feel what's going on in the market. I can understand if money's coming for a horse or if it's not coming from a horse. But I don't need to know the reasons why because the people who are making those decisions and deciding whether to shorten up or lengthen the price of a horse are in the market and doing it. So I see what they see. And that's the essence, you know, of, of, of cold trading effectively, is not having to worry about having an opinion on something uh, because you're, de you're detecting that activity in the market and benefiting from being able to do that. But also it helps you in terms of exiting a trade. So say you've got a trade wrong and a trade goes against you. If you know too much about a sport, you may think, well, that horse ran well last week. Um, you know, it's uh, got a good stall draw and uh, it's good on this course and distance and the going would suit it as well. Well, sometimes that can be a disadvantage because if you're trading, you would think, you know what, I've messed this up, I'm out. But if you have an opinion, then the opinion tends to override the logic of trading. And that's why I don't trade on my own football team um, or anything that I have an allegiance to because that error creeps in to your trading and can disrupt what should be a good trade. You need to be one step removed from it. And you need to say, this is what I'm doing and why, and this is what happened. And if what happened is good, you stick with it and you ride your trade out. And if what happened is bad, then you go, you know what, got that wrong, boom, I'm out. So yeah, you don't need specific knowledge of a sport to be able to trade it effectively because what you're doing is interpreting almost what others are doing. You're getting a view on the market based upon what you can see and feel not necessarily on what's going on and very often that's good enough and it's been good enough for me for a large number of times I'm not a specialist in racing I know enough about racing now and I know a lot more than I used to to improve and enhance my trading but it isn't a prerequisite to be able to trade for example on horse racing markets